So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy L. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Now listen, as I've already told y'all, I'm not too familiar. You know, I'm familiar, but not as I don't have a vast, you know what I mean, background in Reddit. I don't have an extensive background in Reddit. I haven't really been on there like that other than, like I said, third party seeing it through YouTube. Right. But if it's anything like a lot of other these other communities that have these platforms, bro, I know it can get deep, like crazy deep, like sickening or scary or weird deep, that type deep. So I already know it. So when I see this title, it says the five deeply disturbing Reddit posts. I'm like, oh, this could get pretty crazy. Knowing, you know what I'm saying? Knowing what you know about other platforms. So we're going to check it out. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Join the fam and um, can't forget the haters. Moment of silence for the haters. That's enough. Now run the likes up, baby. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Let's go. There are a lot of messed up things that have been posted on Reddit over the years. Many of them infamous, like the carbon monoxide poisoning story. I'm only covering five posts in this video, so this isn't a collection of all of the dark things that have been posted on the site, nor a list of the most well-known posts. It's just a collection I found morbidly intriguing, and that I wanted to share with you guys. If this upload doesn't feature a post that you'd expect to see in a top 5 creepy reddit post video, I may not have included it because I've already covered it in a past video, nor because I plan to use it in a future one. So with all that out the way, please close the curtains, turn off the lights, Settle down. Hey, hey, that's what I, I say. Make sure you, no, make sure, <laughs> make sure your doors is locked and your windows. You see, he threw me off by saying what that. Make sure your doors is locked and your windows is locked and everything is secure, man. All right? Shut it all down. And let's disturb ourselves with a handful of sinister Reddit posts. We'll kick things off with a real heavy one. Prepare yourselves. Three years ago, a man who went by the username Jason in Hell made a post on the r slash relationship advice subreddit. The title of his post spoke for itself. I'm having a hard time coping with my wife having cheated on me with our neighbor. The post itself was a long read, but I'll give you a quick summary here. Essentially, Jason began by saying that one year prior to posting, he caught his 29-year-old wife having an affair with their 51-year-old neighbor. He decided to stay with her for the sake of their two children, but- Dang, a 51-year-old dude. Hold on, how did he say he was? He put it in the, in the post. He's 30, she's 29, and the dude is 51. Wow. 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 How do you- how how are you supposed to interpret that? Are you here? Essentially, Jason began by saying that one year prior to posting, he caught his 29-year-old wife having an affair with their 51-year-old neighbor. He decided to stay with her for the sake of their two children, but said that he hadn't been able to get over the betrayal and that it constantly occupied his mind. It's been 476 days since I confronted her about it. How do I know? Because every time I catch myself thinking about it, I tell myself, it's only been X days, maybe you won't think about it tomorrow. He went on to describe how he found out she was cheating, how he confronted her and the neighbor, and how she responded by threatening him with, you'll never see your kids again if you break up with me. Jason had tried to end his life when he was in high school, so she was going to use that as evidence as to why he was an unfit father, and why he shouldn't have custody or rights to see his children. As such, Jason gave in to her demands and decided to stay with her. She even made the poor guy apologize to the neighbor. After making his post, Jason received various responses, some of them a little tone deaf, though ultimately most people agreed he needed to file for divorce pronto. Staying in an unhealthy relationship was- Now I know, I, I know a lot of y'all was like, oh, when you heard she made him apologize, I was like, yo, this dude ain't got no spine or, or no backbone or nothing. I was initially thinking that, but a few seconds went by and I was like, you know what? There's no telling what you would do for your children, right? And she's threatening to remove or to, to keep you from them. She's threatening to do that. Can she do that? Who knows? If she goes after it and the judge awards her with whatever elaborate story she comes up with, 
and then you can't see your kid, that's that's gonna be in the back of your mind. So y'all may be like, oh, he's spineless, he's this and that. But if you step back and look at it, he's willing to do whatever to try to be in his kid's life right now. It may come off as that way, but I get why he might have done that. You know what I mean? I'm not saying I could have done that though. <laughs> I don't know if I'm 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 there yet in my life as far as that level of I don't know, but I couldn't I don't know if I could have did that, but I'm not gonna knock him because he was getting threatened with not being able to see his kids. It was a bad idea for both him and the kids. So, staying in an unhealthy relationship was a bad idea for both him and the kids. Jason then made a follow-up post in which he thanked everyone for their advice and said he was indeed going ahead with the divorce like they suggested, and was meeting with an attorney the following week. Problem solved, right? Far from it. This is where things took a horrible and unforeseeable turn. Jason's wife's name was Brandy Worley. On the evening that Jason filed for divorce, she went to the kitchen, picked up a blade, and took the lives of both of their children by plunging it into their necks. She even tried to end her own life before calling the authorities and telling them what had just happened. All the while, Jason was asleep in the basement. Brandy was sentenced to 120 years in prison. Reddit was in disbelief. See, now all those people who told him what to do or was filling his head up, making him think was... See, this is why you don't interject, man. No. All them people that sat there and was like, oh, you should file for a divorce. That's why I specifically said I can't knock him for, for humbling himself because of his kids or for him doing whatever he thought he needed to do to stay in his kid's life. You can't knock a person for that. And then you can't turn around and tell a person what they should do or and try to influence their decision. You can't do that, bro. You can't. That's why I'd be like, you know what I'm saying? And then you say, if it were me... You know, you start the conversation like all oh, that, and that's kind of okay for you to say if it were me, but I definitely wouldn't tell him, yo, you should do this. You can't do that. Now you should be just as responsible for him being without his children as he, as bad as he feel. Cause now he's going to be kicking himself to say, if I didn't listen to them people on that Reddit post, or maybe if I didn't listen, my, my children would still be here. That's why I don't interject in people's problems and stuff like that, man, because I don't want nobody to look at me and say, if I wouldn't listen to you, then such and such could not have possibly happen. Especially the relationship advice subreddit. Everyone who read the previous posts knew that Brandy was a horrible person, but I doubt anyone anticipated she was truly evil. Many users felt guilty for the advice they had given Jason, specifically those who had replied with a harsh tone, criticizing him. A mod authored post was made. Oh. Exactly, they, they should. Asking everyone to remember that behind each of the posts on the site was a real person with real problems and to respond respectfully. In an anonymous environment, people can be quite mean, that's for sure. Jason went on to make one more post, this time titled, Thank You. I would like to give a heartfelt and sincere thank you for the advice and support I have received here. No one could have foreseen the tragedy that resulted from my filing for divorce. You guys perform a wonderful service to those in need, and I hope you continue to do so in the future. With the support of YouTuber Philip DeFranco, who raised awareness about the incident, $56,000 was raised to help Jason with living and funeral expenses. I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say our thoughts go out to him. No one deserves to go through what he did. Wow. Five years ago, Reddit user Larry Gilger made a post on a thread titled, What was the scariest or creepiest thing that ever happened to you? The thread itself went relatively unnoticed, only reaching 3.6k upvotes. But one of the posts in particular stuck in the minds of the people who read it at the time. And even today, it gets cited as one of the creepiest experiences shared by any user on the site. It comes from a user who has since deleted their account and is a cautionary tale of the highest order. Years ago, I went on a cross-country trip solo to a family reunion. I was supposed to make it to a friend's house, but there was horrible weather, so it was slow moving. Then a terrible accident happened just ahead of me, and I was stuck for quite a while. 
All told, I was five hours behind schedule. I was exhausted, in need of a bathroom and a shower, so I pulled into a little motel off a fairly back road state road. It was obviously small and dirty, but sound like Bates Motel. <laughs> so that's where he pulled up to. It would work in a pinch. There was a window to the outside where check-in was. The guy there eyed me up, I was then a college age girl, and asked me if I was traveling alone. I went to hand in my ID and credit card, but he insisted on cash only. Red flags were going off at this point, but I scrounged together just enough cash, and he tossed me the key. The room was dirty, barely bigger than the bed. The first thing I did was go to the bathroom, then I flipped up the mattress. Dirty, signs of bed bugs. A moment later, I spied a cockroach. That was it, I was out. I decided I would use the parking space at least, and sleep in the back trunk hatch of my SUV. I curled up, using a suitcase for a pillow and random clothes for a blanket, and fell asleep for an hour. I woke up, aware of someone talking on a phone outside, and glanced out to see the guy from check-in standing outside. It was now around 3am. He finished up his call, then walked quietly over to my room, unlocked the door and walked in. The lights didn't turn on, and a minute or two later, he came back out, slamming the door behind him and cursing with another guy. I hadn't seen two guys enter so I still don't know where he came from. They angrily talked for a moment. Then, checking guy walked over to my SUV. I covered up my head quickly with a shirt. After he tried the locked door, he peered into the back seat, but between my tinted windows and blending into the general mess, he didn't notice me in the hatch. The two guys walked away to the far side of the lot, talking more, one of them gesturing across the street where a diner was. While they were distracted, I climbed up to the front seat and started the SUV. They turned around in surprise as I pulled away. I called my friends back home and told them, but didn't want to worry my family, so I said nothing to them. When I got back home some three weeks later, we figured out the name of the motel thanks to Google Maps and called the local authorities. They told me the place had closed down only days before I called. This was about a decade ago took place along 250, I believe, in Virginia. The place's name was Mountain Top or Mountainside Motel. It was a single-story building, check-in window in the middle, tiny diner across the street, no other businesses nearby. My logic was that it was smarter than parking by the side of the road. Police took my info, never called me back, never found out anything from web searches immediately afterwards either. These sorts of threads always get great responses, but I had to pick one to show you guys. So, there you have it. Always keep your wits about you, especially if you stop at a dodgy motel in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, he was right. Everything in his head suggested what he was possibly thinking. You know what I mean? Them asking him to pay for cash, uh, cash only. You know, where it was located just seemed like, like I said, I screamed out Bates Motel as soon as, I heard, as soon as I heard it. Him going in the room, it being nasty, dirty, dingy, all that type of stuff, man. It was, no. And him laying in the back of that truck gave him this, the opportunity to see that they was trying to get the drop on him. They was definitely trying to get the drop on him. Not a single post, so to speak. But occasionally on Ask Reddit, you'll see someone pose the question, what secret could ruin your life? Or something to that effect. These threads always garner an interesting range of responses. Although a lot of the replies are lighthearted and in the spirit of good fun, others are more disturbing, and some even sinister. Three years ago, one of these what secret could ruin your life threads was started by user This is a Throwaway 23 a relevant username, since pretty much everyone who makes a wild confession on the website makes a new account to do so. A throwaway account. They don't want anyone they know tracing their post back to them after all. Not on a thread like this at least. <laughs> Some of their replies might make you crack a smile, like VR6's post. I get paid a six-figure salary for a standard 40-hour-a-week corporate job for a massive well-known company. In a given week, I do maybe an hour of actual work. 
The rest of the time, I'm on Reddit or YouTube slacking off. I thought when I got this job that eventually someone would figure out I don't do anything all day. But here I am, 14 years later, still doing fuck all. And <laughs> what type of job he got? 40 hours a week? Only doing an hour's worth of work? And been doing it for 14 years, fam? How many of y'all, you, you ain't even got to put your hands up? You ain't even got to comment, bro. I know a lot of people that will want that job, fam. That's crazy. And getting paid a lot for it. Some of the replies, however, are from users who clearly need a way to get things off their chest and use their throwaway accounts to confess their deepest secrets to strangers. A few of them are so bad that I can't actually read them here, not without upsetting Papa YouTube at least, but I'll read a handful of some interesting ones now. A while back, I was cheating on my wife with a co-worker. It went on for months, and I never really cared for the woman I was cheating with. She was super hot though. After a while, my co-worker started getting really crazy and threatened to tell my wife, whom I had a child with and a baby on the way, about everything. Obviously, I kept trying to cut things off because I realized I was making a mistake. She lost it one night and was freaking out and texting me, telling me she was going to come to my house. A drunk driver hit her. She died instantly. No one knows I was having an affair and my family went to her funeral. I cut off all. Oh, I'm not gonna say it though. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna. Y'all, I. Oh. Oh. Y'all think he sent somebody to kill her? Or was it a coincidence and he just. He was relieved that. Whew, that's crazy. That's crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Because I'm not trying to say, you know what I mean? Glorify nobody dying or nothing like that. I ain't. I ain't that type of person. But from his standpoint, what y'all think he was thinking? <sighs> you know, I'm sorry she had to die, but, um, yeah, I guarantee that's what he was thinking. All contact with everyone I know and move to Kenya. I tell people a fake name and a fake background and have made it appear to my family that I died on a boat trip in the Pacific. No, I am not joking. I am dead in the United States. When I was about five years old, my sister, who was two and I, were in the backyard in a kiddie pool. When my mum went inside, I attempted to drown my sister. After I saw her lifeless, I realized that it was a big mistake, pulled her out of the pool and called for my mum. Luckily, she knew CPL and she was life lighted to the hospital. My mum thanked me for saving her, for pulling her out of the pool. Next week was my birthday. The police, firefighters, paramedics, they all came to my house to give me gifts and celebrate my birthday. To this day, 20 years later, I still think about it. I remember the day so vividly. Not a soul knows the truth. But I'm in love with my best friend, not my husband. Secrets like that and so on and so forth. What makes threads like this so disturbing is the realization that so many people, normal, everyday folk, harbor some pretty dark secrets that they don't share with anybody. And these are just the ones that people are comfortable to admit. Who knows what other things go unsaid? Maybe your close friends or family members or life partners are hiding a huge secret from you that would completely alter how you saw them. Perhaps something so- <laughs> Man, y'all gonna walk around the, neck the rest of the day trying to figure out who keeping a secret from, from you? You're going to be side-eyeing everybody for the rest of this week trying to figure out. Especially if you got a spouse, you're going to be looking at them. You're keep, you keeping something from me, ain't you? Hey, hey, hey. What is it? What is it? <laughs> Y'all going to be... My bad, I ain't mean to do that, bro. So bad that it would ruin your relationship with them, or even your entire life. Perhaps you're even hiding something like that yourself. How much do we really know about the people around us? Heck, even the people closest to us. Thoughts like that sometimes lead me to ask myself, is it better to face reality and hear a dark truth, even one that could uproot your entire world and change everything, in the knowledge that at least you know what's real in your life? Or is it better to go on living a lie in blissful ignorance? What do you think?
and there's a lot of creepy material on our Let's Not Meet. It's pretty much the subreddit where all of us horror narrators found our stories back in the early days. It's a place for people to share their real life encounters with others that they never want to meet again. Most of the stories are pretty dark, but a few stand out as truly bone chilling. I'll share one such post here with you now, from Reddit user Flaxenbear. There were many posts on the subreddit that I could have selected for this entry, but I decided to go with this one because it sums up the best, or should I say, creepiest type of content that the sub has to offer, and really encapsulates the whole point of it. Here it goes. Before I start, here's a bit of context to my story. My husband and I lived in a small, two-floor house with two main entrances, one along the front and the other on the side of the house, which opens into the laundry room. When we're too busy or it's too late to walk our dog, we hook his collar onto a long line that's attached to one of the pipes on the corner of our house so we can use the bathroom. We used to do this from the door in our laundry room, but we'd noticed that the large step from the door to the ground had been taking a toll on his hips. As a result, we started letting him in through the front door instead, since the porch is much closer to the ground. This particular night, I was home alone with my dog, and it was around midnight when I decided to let him go outside one last time before going to bed. I hook him up to his line, close the door, and lock it, before heading into the kitchen to put away the dishes. And this was pretty routine. Even if he used the bathroom quickly, he liked to walk around along the front side of our house for a few minutes before coming back inside. As I'm putting away the dishes, I hear a scratch on the door. That's how my dog signals he wants to come inside. So I head over to let him back in. Since I've watched way too many scary movies, I always look through the door's peephole before opening the door. <laughs> Out of habit, I look to check that my dog is in front of the door. Instead, I see a man staring very intently at the door handle. I freeze with my hand on the doorknob. I don't know how much time went by, but then I heard another scratch, this one louder than the last. This kind of wakes me up from my initial shock, and I run to grab my cell phone. I call my husband to tell him what's happening. He was very confused. I probably wasn't explaining the situation very well, but he says that he's heading home. This is when I realize my dog is still outside with this person. I head back to the front door, trying to make as little noise as possible to check whether the stranger is still there. Just like before, he's standing there, head bowed, looking at the door handle. I tiptoe over to the laundry room and slowly open the door as quietly as possible. I can't see my dog anywhere and the side of my house is covered in gravel. I knew I couldn't step outside without making a lot of noise. With my heart still pounding in my chest, I go to the front door to keep an eye on the stranger and to get a better look at him. I considered calling the authorities, but I didn't feel they'd take me seriously, since all this man was doing was standing in front of my house. I tried taking a picture of him with my cell phone, but my camera was only able to take pictures of the people and not the images behind the glass. All of a sudden, the man looks up directly at me. I swear he knew I was there. He glares at me then opens his mouth to show this taunting, malicious grin. He stood there that way for a few seconds. With that, he turns around and starts to walk down the street. I stay in the same place, almost expecting him to rush back and start pounding on the door. Luckily, my husband got back after a few minutes. Long story short, he convinced me to call the authorities, and we went out looking for our dog. It turns out, this man had cut the end of the line connected to the pipe, and our dog decided it was a good time for him to go and explore the neighbor's backyard, which was where we found him. It's been three years since this happened. We've since moved to a new house, and related reasons, and the authorities weren't able to come up with any suspects. Ever since then, we take our dog on very long walks before the sun goes down. It's horrifying to think there was a man outside this woman's door, scratching on it, pretending to be her dog so he could gain access to her home. What his intentions were remains unclear. No, they're not unclear. The only thing I can think of is you either coming in there to, to kill somebody or to rob them, which may intentionally lead to you killing somebody, bro. But yeah, that's crazy. He was conniving enough to think about scratching at the door, so obviously he's been watching your house 
for some time to know that the dog comes out there to sit and or go do whatever it needs to do. And then it scratches the leg. So he's been casing the place for a long enough time, bro. That's why I said, man, possibly invest in, in some cameras. That way you can review them at the end of the day and see. Because you're not always paying attention. So to be able to see is if, see if somebody's casing your joint. See if somebody constantly walks past and looking. Certain things we could pick up on. We have some more cameras, bro. I got to do the same thing. Still, this is a classic story from Let's Not Meet and one that gets shared around on the site whenever people talk about the creepiest Reddit posts. Exactly. Good thing she looked out at peephole. A simple post for this final entry, but one that's equal parts intriguing and unsettling. Four and a half years ago, user Bangarang made the following post. Need $700,000. What do I do? I need it by January 2016, or I'm dead from the mob. What are my options, though? A lot of people didn't take this seriously, joking around in the comment section. But after a few sincere replies from Bangarang himself, others started to come around to the idea that this post might be legit after all. One person questioned why the OP needed the money. Bangarang responded, was involved in a fight where an 18-year-old kid was killed. I was on some stuff and had a bad temper. I was always protective of my friends, especially John. John was in a band that was taking off. They had a Facebook page. He deactivated it and made a new one. One of his friends got real mad that he deleted the old page and thought he didn't want anything to do with her or his old friends because of the new fame and band. John tried to explain to her that that wasn't the case. I peered over John's shoulder, read the text that got heated. I started trash-talking the girl. She got her boyfriend's friends to meet my friends out in the desert for a brawl. One of the guys there was a gang member and pulled out a gun to shoot me and my friends. One of my friends grabbed the gun from him and ended up shooting and killing the guy. Now I sobered up. I just turned 23 and I'm in a real bad place with some people from the past. In his final post, the OP shared a picture from outside his home. I think they'll get to me before I can make any moves. That was the last post Bangarang ever made. Today, four and a half years later, there hasn't been any activity on his account whatsoever. This has led many to believe that his appeal for help was authentic. This is a pretty unknown post, since it only got 155 upvotes when it was made. But if Bangarang's story is true, it's one of the darkest posts that the site has to offer. It's nice to think that the past is the past, but sometimes, depending on what you've done, it can really come back to bite you. Man, imagine having to come up with 700 grand for your life. Imagine that. <laughs> like, what? what's your options? What's your ideas? Because that's what he asked for in the beginning. What are my options? 700 grand bro if i knew how to go get 700 grand in a short amount of time don't you think we'd all be doing it so i ain't gonna tell you to rob no bank i ain't gonna tell you to you know what i mean <laughs> those are the only ways but those ain't gonna be successful either like what 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 do you do what do you do you tell him to try to get out of town buy yourself some time get ghosts get low Lead a country, passport style, something so you can figure it out. Witness protection. Well, when it comes to the mob, I don't really believe in witness protection because I feel like they got cops on payroll. So that might not be the route. So I would say get out of town, buy yourself some time. You know what I'm saying? The juice probably still going to be running. So, you know, you're going to have to deal with the, the overages when you get back. It may be maybe at 900,000 or a million by the time you get back, but buy yourself some time and uh, figure that out, bro. Yeah, that's the only advice I could probably give him. But um, yeah, and see, you don't wanna get that advice because what if you try to leave, they catch him and kill him and said, if you wouldn't have left, maybe you'd still be alive. I don't know, I don't know. But in my head, I'm thinking buy time, maybe possibly the only, only answer. But y'all get at me in the comment section, man. Let me know what y'all thought of this video, Five. 
deeply disturbing Reddit posts. All right, and y'all stay away from Bates Motel. All right, Shibuya, to the next reaction of my piece, y'all stay solid. Hey.